Hi, Mindy from Cute Girls Hairstyles, and today it's a little bit different format. We are gonna do this a little more vlog style today, but I'm gonna basically be testing gray root sprays. So if you are like me, during COVID, I realized how much gray I have in my roots. I've been hiding all these years by going to the salon. Kinda hard to hide. But even when I go to the salon, in between my hairstyles, I like to stretch out how long I can go. So then I use some gray coverage. However, I'm not quite happy with the one I've been using and so I wanted to test them all and see which ones worked better, which ones made the least amount of mess, that kind of stuff. So we are totally going to try out like six different sprays over the course of the next week and determine which one's the best. If you guys haven't subscribed to our channel already, be sure to click the button right here. Make sure and ring the bell so that you can follow along and let's go. First, I'm gonna show you guys just how much gray I actually have. I get the most gray right down the middle of my hair. That's bad. And then I get it peppered just kind of throughout, but particularly right here in my temples tends to go like really white and right through here. So those are the spots I love to touch up with the gray spray. First one I'm going to be trying today is the one most people are probably familiar with because you can get this at Walmart, you can get it at Target, you can get it online, but this L'Oreal Magic Root coverage. First thing I'm gonna do before I do this is anyone that's used gray spray before knows I would be a fool to keep this shirt on and then spray it on my hair because one of the worst things about gray spray is the overspray and then it stains your clothes. So I'm gonna switch out. One of the tests I'm gonna do on every brand is I'm gonna put on a white t-shirt, like just a white, white shirt, not a nice white shirt, like one I don't care about. And we're gonna see what happens, how much overspray there is for each brand. First thing I'm gonna do is just spray it on a white piece of paper too, about six inches, and then spray with gentle pressure. So that's kind of what it looks like on the paper. But can you see all that overspray? That's what happens in your hair too. Anyway, that's what it looks like on the paper. Now I'm gonna do it on my roots. Light, gentle pressure. Kind of hard to do this in a camera. Right along the lines. Okay, so you can see like that the gray is now much harder to see, right? Can't see it nearly as much, which is good. So if it were me, I kind of feel like now, I pretty much have, I'm a hair flipper, so I kind of have to hit all over to make sure that I don't see any anywhere. But I feel pretty good about that. Like I don't think that my gray is showing through as much. I feel like the main part lines where I flip my hair, I feel like it did its job in the fact that it covered the gray. However, like my fingertips are brown, totally brown. And that's one of my biggest complaints about the root coverage in general is if you touch your hair at all, for the rest of the day, like if I were like, oh, I have an itch, guess what my fingers are gonna look like when we're done. Now, I have tried spraying hairspray over the top of gray, gray root spray in the past. Sometimes that can help a little bit with this, but it doesn't make it totally go away. So I have freckles anyway, so don't misconstrue my freckles for spots from the gray spray, but like this one on my nose right there, not a freckle. I don't, I don't even know how to wipe it off without wiping other stuff on my face. So one, two, three, four little white dots that I can see right in the front where I would then have stains on my shirt, which is annoying. We'll see if this performs better or worse than the rest of the ones through the week. Today we are going to be testing out this one, Salon in a Bottle. I bought this off of Amazon. Now, if you look at this one versus this one, you can see the nozzle shapes are a little bit different. So it's interesting to see, hold this up. It has a ton of brown around the nozzle and on the bottle from where it oversprayed. We're gonna see what happens. I'm in my white shirt again. I have my piece of paper. So we're gonna start by just doing it on the piece of paper. And you can see this one, I feel like is spraying a little more fine than the first one did. Like I'm having to kind of go back and forth. I feel like this one's not as quite a direct as shot. It's a little more aerosol -y, like a little finer mist. Nothing on my shirt. I do still have some brown on my fingers, particularly like where I touched it right here. I got a bunch on this one finger. So as far as brown, like getting on your fingers, Still did, but it did not overspray on my shirt, which is a big deal to me because I hate it when it gets on my shirt. In fact, I pulled my laundry out this morning and I had a white shirt on the other day when I used this and um, before I filmed this video and I had spots on the stains from this and I was like, ugh. If you're going to use that one, make sure you use a towel. But I do think this one's a little more like fine mist, which I kind of like because I feel like I'm, I have more control over where it's spraying, but it does seem to be still getting enough coverage for my very gray hair. 
So we're gonna give this one a whirl today now that we've done the initial testing and see what we think. Hey guys, it's day three. You can see Gray is back. For the record, I did feel like, I'm gonna back up to day two. I do feel like day two, it still got on my fingers as I ran my hands through my hair, but not as bad as day one. So today I'm gonna try something a little different. I have never used one of these before. It looks like this in this box, gray away, and it's supposed to be a root touch-up magnetic powder. It comes in this little container. I'm gonna open it up. There's the spongy. Now I'm gonna, okay, flip it open. It almost looks like a eyela or an eyebrow powder, to be honest. And I'm going to sweep it through. It's covering it. Ish. Okay, I have it all in, I think, like what I would normally do. And I mean, the gray is gone, so that's a good indicator. I do have like these little face spots. I'm gonna have to go get a, a rag and wipe off, but the, the trick is I wanted to see. If I do this, I think you know I'm a hair flipper. What are my hands gonna look like? But yeah, you can still see. I mean, I am impressed. It took a little longer applying the other, like the spray version, but also I don't feel like I have any on my shirt because there was less fallout. There was less overspray. So we'll see. We'll see how I'm gonna wear it all day. We'll see how I feel about it. If I feel like it's falling out or I don't feel like I got like fallout from the eyeshadow, but I do feel like I still have it on my fingers. I'm gonna go touch up these spots, wash my hands, and then we'll see how I feel about it at the end of the day. Okay guys, next day, we're ready to do this. Um, I'm actually gonna cheat just a little bit today and I'm gonna test more than one product because doing this is taking too long. I'm washing my hair, it's driving me crazy every day. But before we begin, I wanna just notate that my hair today looks so ratchet because I am testing product. Anyway, and this product happens to be terrible so it makes my ends look so frazzled and not good. Anyway. On to the video. So because I'm wearing an try powder, I wanted to try this one. It's called Wow, Color Wow. Um, got this on Amazon. And basically it's just a little, looks like a little eyeshadow palette inside and it comes with this brush. And again, the idea is just that you run this down and then cut the roots with it. Okay, so doing this, what I'm noticing right off the bat is it's really hard to get it to cover fully the gray. I mean, it is doing the job, but look, you can still see grayness right in there, even though I put this over the top and it's, it's gonna take a ton to do it. Definitely still brown on my fingers, so we're not getting any better than anything else there. Quite honestly, I can just tell you from looking at this that this one would drive me crazy because it would take 10 years, and I don't want to spend doing 10 years doing that every morning on my hair. I wouldn't love that one. Okay, next one is this one. It's called Style Edit. This one has pretty good reviews on Amazon, almost as good a reviews as the L'Oreal. We're gonna give this one a whirl. I don't have on my white shirt. Okay, I'm back. Ooh, also, I realized I didn't do the paper test. Remember how I sprayed it on? Can you see the overspray spots though? Looks about the same as the others on spray test, honestly. Nozzle's shaped the same as L'Oreal. It contains the same number of ounces too, just FYI. So, but where I did spray it, you can't see gray anymore, like up in here. So I feel like it worked pretty good. Took overspray on my shirt. No overspray, I did notice some on my face. There was definitely, ooh, overspray on my face. Okay, and then just, I can tell you, just from holding the bottle and touching my hair that much, my hands are brown. So I definitely, if I'm gonna touch my hair through the day and flip it, it's gonna be brown. So I went to go wash my hands and when I came back, I noticed that right on my floor, right where I was sitting, there was overspray. So I guess this one did overspray a little, it just didn't go on my shirt, it went, on the floor in front of me, or possibly my dark jeans, which then I wouldn't be able to see very well. So the other one I'm gonna try today is Rita Hassan, also off of Amazon, and we will see. Same thing, the nozzle looks the same. Let's do spray test. Oh, this one's actually really dark. Yeah, this, is, this color is dark brown black, so I may have gotten too dark on this one, because, okay. We're gonna roll with it. There's definitely a little overspray right here on my face. That's a freckle. If I touch it, my fingers definitely turn brown. You can see I just got smears on my face. I don't notice on my shirt too much overspray. Okay, we're gonna let these sit. We're gonna go through the day and see if I notice that I like one better than the other, one feels better, one doesn't make my fingers as dirty, etc. 
So disclaimer, it's been about a week since I've been on here and during that period of time, I went and got my hair color. So I no longer have the super obvious gray that I had, but I wanted to just wrap this video up by talking about brown dry shampoos, because I had some people say, well, stop using a root cover and just use a brown dry shampoo, tinted dry shampoo. I wanted to note that for the record, I have used in the past this Bumble and Bumble brownish hairspray hair powder. It's sort of like a cross between a dry shampoo and a gray spray. And I had major problems, even just look at the nozzle, with it just spraying all over my fingertips and my clothing. I stopped using that one. But today I wanted to do something. I have here, I have the Batiste brown tint and the Moroccan oil brown tint. And these are both just straight up dry shampoo. So I was going to kind of just split my hair down the middle, spray a little in both. And I know we won't be able to see how good the gray coverage is, but mostly I'm just looking to see if I feel like it covers at all or if it gets on my fingers. So I'm gonna go, or my clothes. I forgot a, a shirt, so we're gonna give it a whirl. This is the Batiste. We're just gonna go right here, especially. I think we'd be able to tell whether it was, yeah, can you see how it's changing colors? So it is looking and acting and behaving similar to one of the root sprays. Okay, but now I'm gonna just, you know, spray it through my hair like I really would. Shampoo. This is my right hand, and this is the brown dry shampoo from Batiste, and Moroccan oil's on my left. Because if this really did cover, like, the root spray, and behave like a dry shampoo, it might be the best of both worlds if it didn't come off on your fingers. No, see, this one's actually blowing white, which it shouldn't be doing. Okay, so we're gonna give those a whirl today. We're gonna run my fingers through them. Let's see what happens. Gunk on my hands, my fingers. If it is at all, it's like the tiniest, tiniest bit, which I'm kind of surprised by because quite frankly, over here, I'm gonna spray it just to test it. Let's do a good give it five seconds to really. Because I feel like that's darkening. I really do feel like that looks darker. Now let's touch it. Okay, okay. That time I got the slightest, slightest bit, but you saw I touched it like almost immediately, and it's not nearly as bad as some of the others. So I'm gonna give this today. I will report back later tonight on what my final findings were. Okay guys, it's the last day, final recap. So you know yesterday I tried the gray, it was technically dry shampoo that's brown tinted, and even though I did feel like the Batiste sprayed on pretty well and had a little bit of gray coverage, I just didn't think it had the staying power all day long. So ultimately, if you're gonna look for a gray spray, stick with a gray spray and not a brown dry shampoo. That's my advice. Of all the ones I tried, I hated the powders. I definitely leaned toward the sprays. They just worked better and more effectively and were easier and faster. Of the sprays, my favorite one overall was, dun dun dun, dun unpopular opinion, because I, I know everyone's gonna think I'm gonna say L'Oreal. But my favorite one was the Salon in a Bottle. You can get this on Amazon. My second favorite was the L'Oreal. The only difference, because I think ultimately they all come off on your fingers, I couldn't find one that if you touched or rubbed wouldn't fall on or wouldn't you know fall onto your fingers. The biggest difference was the way they spray, and I think it's the nozzles. You can see the difference right there. So the L'Oreal for me gives more overspray and gets on my clothing easier and faster than the salon in the bottle with this nozzle. However, the downside, if price is definitely added in, I think it's a toss up then because you know, who wants to spend twice as much or more than twice as much? If they were the same price, I would 100% tell you to buy this one over L'Oreal, but they're not the same price. So, <sighs> It's so frustrating, this whole thing. The bottom line is, I personally definitely think the gray sprays do their job, they work. I am frustrated that we can't seem to find one that won't have the payoff on your fingers. It definitely can help me go an extra two weeks in between my hair colorings, which I love. And I love lack of damage on my hair because I'm not dyeing it as often and it's less, way less expensive. I think that overall I would tell you to keep using them. Overall I would say that gray sprays in general are a fab. I would just tell you going into it that if you're gonna use them, know that there's gonna be some overspray unless you're gonna spend twice as much and get this one. Ultimately, two thumbs up fabs for the gray sprays in general, but I'm gonna have to figure out a way to make one that's better so that we can get the one for $7 that doesn't overspray, that doesn't get on your fingers. Hey, that's my next heritage product. Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you guys haven't already subscribed to our channel, be sure to do that by clicking this button right here. You can click the bell so that you make sure you see all the notifications and we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.